Hello again, Hakim here from Tech of Experts. In my last video, I had promised that I will do a demonstration for that high rise building, but for interior painting. Uh, it's been a few weeks. Before I show you the demonstration, I just want to tell you that this video is not only for uh, very large scale painting contractors, it's also for those of you who want to subcontract under a larger painting contractor. So the message I'm going to give you here is that um, if you cannot take on a whole building, you can at least subcontract under a bigger contractor. But if you're subcontracting, you're not just working by the hour as a painter. You have to know the square footage of the areas or the wall uh, areas that you will be painting. Uh, it's not a good idea to just take a subcontract from a larger painting contractor without having a clue about what areas you'll be painting because um, if the if the painting contractor uh, tells you you know this is the building and this is the square footages you'll be painting and this is how much I'll be paying you you're taking his word for it and um, if you have a relationship of trust that's fine but the thing is you have to do your due diligence also and if you can uh, do takeoffs, that's okay. Uh, somebody can always help you with the takeoffs. So, so that, you know, when you take on a, a, a subcontract and then in the middle of the project, you are not getting into disagreements with the main painting contractor. So it's always good to know what areas you'll be painting, not just size-wise, but also the scope. Because when you're doing the interior of a large building like that um, you have to know what is what uh, you will not be doing um, in addition to what you will be doing so i'll give you an example one example would be uh, the railings in stairwells so if doing stairwells is in your uh, in your scope of work if you're subcontracted to do all the interior painting of the common areas well are you also going to be doing the the uh, stairwell railings because in some buildings the railings need to be painted black in some they need to be painted white and in some they don't need to be painted so you have to know whether you'll be painting the handrails or not this is just one example okay um, if you are a smaller painting contractors and let's say you want to take on a subcontract for painting only the common areas well it's very important that you get your takeoffs done so that you can tell the main painting contractor, okay, this is my understanding of the common areas. The common areas is these hallways, which are these many square feet. As you can see here in the spreadsheet, you know, the stairwells are this much and the stairwells include the railings or they don't include the railings. The baseboards in the hallways, uh, if they are painted, they are this many linear feet and so on. So even if you are a painting subcontractor, you have to know uh, the quantity of the areas uh, that you will be painting, both in square feet as well as uh, linear feet, depending on what items you will be painting. Um, when we were doing a certain commercial project, there were some areas that we had to repaint. So there were some, uh, for example, fire extinguisher cabinets which we had to repaint. So in your case, you have to know are the fire extinguisher cabinets going to be uh, pre-finished or are we going to also have to repaint them? That means you have to take the fire extinguisher out if it's not, uh, you know, if it's already been installed and then you'll be painting it and then putting it back in. Now, that's just one example. There are a lot of uh, new buildings today where the fire extinguisher cabinet doesn't need to be painted because it's pre-finished. And then you have to know how much bulkheads in the in the hallways that will need to be painted. Uh, that's a big deal because bulkheads take a lot of time to do. Uh, they take uh, more time to do than just you know plain straight flat ceilings. And you have to know whether the ceilings in the hallway will have a stucco or popcorn ceiling, or whether there'll be a combination of GWB or drywall bulkhead plus the acoustic ceilings ACT so we measure all of that and we give you everything in the spreadsheet 
so that you can then do your own costing and you can tell the painting contractor, yes, I can do it for this much. Or the painting contractor might tell you, you know, can you give me a price for painting all the common areas? Then you can very confidently and professionally tell him, look, these are the areas, these are the square footages, here is my spreadsheet, here are all the floors. That way the painting contractor knows that you know what you are doing, at, or at least you have somebody on your team who is uh, measuring everything for you and guiding you. So it's very important to get the uh, interiors measured. Okay, let's go a little bit more into this video now. So, uh, as you can see, this building is a high-rise building, and um, you know the floors from the fifth floor to the 23rd floor are identical. So we would be measuring, in this case, uh, just the fifth floor, and then we would be multiplying it by the number of identical floors. So it's not going to cost you a fortune to get your takeoffs done because we don't need to uh, duplicate efforts. We can just measure a uh, couple of floors, make, make sure that they're identical, and we can just multiply them by the number of floors that are identical. And this is a typical layout of what we would be measuring. You can see there's different kinds of suites here. And, you know, there's all kinds of partitions. Some suites are one bedroom, some are two bedrooms, and so on. And you can see in this rendering, it gives you an idea of the, of the partitions. And we did this sketch up here for you so that you can follow easily um, by looking. You know, when we set this furniture, then you can then see the special relationship between the furniture and the walls and so on. So you get a feel of, you know, how we are going to be painting a building like this. So uh, my next point I want to do, I want to make is that um, uh, accuracy is very important. So you have to know how long it's, it's taking your painters to paint every 10 square feet or every 100 square feet and so on and so that you can give your pricing properly because I'm not going to tell you what pricing you should uh, you should set for your painters. So when I was running my own um, painting company, uh, my estimate was we did a breakdown of the cost of uh, painting walls, for example. So my estimate was it was costing me around 50 to 60, uh, about 50 cents per square foot to prime and paint each square foot of drywall. So that included, you know, my labor paint and everything. So, and then I marked up from there. So I went from 60 cents to 90 cents. So I was putting a 30 cent markup depending on the, on the type of project I was doing. You have to know what your square foot per square foot pricing is so that you can then discuss with the main painting contractor. So there's a lot of drawings that uh, come in a set of uh, set of drawings, lots of pages. So we look at what the different paint codes are, and then we also mention that in the spreadsheet. Uh, we look at the specifications and also the common area finishing schedule, the suites finishing schedule, and so on. And we try to, we highlight everything so that you know uh, what colors are being used, where you would be buying your colors. Or in your case, if you are um, subcontracting under another painting contractor, then um, maybe you have a deal with the painting contractor that he supplies all the materials and then you just do the work with your guys. In this case, you don't need to worry about the specifics of the product, but it's still good to know what you'll be working with. You know, some people prefer Sherwin Williams, some people prefer Dulux and so on. It's good to know what products you'll be working with and what the colors are because if there are some accent colors, for example, orange, blue, and so on, then you may be, you, you will need to apply um, tinted primer before you paint. So you have to tell the painting contractor, please make sure you supply me with, you know, so much tinted primer when we are priming those areas which have uh, accent, dark accent colors. So it's good to know stuff like that also. And I was talking about stairwells. Here is a drawing of a stairwell. 
Um, you see it also shows that uh, there are some textile warning surfaces that need to be painted. Uh, so you have to, we have to figure out uh, whether it's uh, going to be epoxy or ordinary concrete paint. Often it's epoxy and then you have to um, make an agreement with the painting contractor whether you are going to be doing those tactile strips or whether he is going to be doing it with his guys along with the other epoxy work. So that's your decision whether you are doing epoxy or not. If you don't do epoxy then you can exclude this from your bid and it's important or your subcontract bid for this painting contractor so that uh, you, you don't have any uh, disagreements later on. And you can see there's a, a tubular handrail over here. Um, it's important also to know how long it takes your painters to paint each linear feet or linear foot of railing and then price it accordingly because we can measure everything for you, like I said, but you have to figure out your own pricing. So here is the spreadsheet now that I was talking about, um, which we have prepared. You will notice here that each type of suite has, um, has a label and there's different numbers of floors. So for example, level six to 28, that's 23 floors. Uh, those, we don't have to measure all 23 floors individually because they are identical. So we would measure the, just the sixth floor and then multiply it by 23. And then we put the formula here in the spreadsheet and we total up everything for you. Uh, and you can discuss this spreadsheet with your painting contractor so that again, you are all on the same page and you, know, you both have a proper understanding of how much square footages are involved. It also helps you when you are planning for your uh, material delivery to the job site. You know, okay, this is the amount of square footage um, that uh, we have to paint for this floor and this is how much primer we'll need, this is how much paint we'll need and so on. So then we total up everything and put everything in the BOQ uh, spreadsheet here. And this is where you can put your pricing and you can submit your bid to the main painting contractor. And of course, if you are the painting contractor, you also need this spreadsheet so that you can build your bid according to the breakdown requirements set by the GC. So I've made this video for both painting contractors and painting subcontractors. So uh, the one big advantage of being a subcontractor, a painting subcontractor under another painting contractor, taking on these you know, bits and pieces or portions of these high rise buildings is that you slowly become more and more experienced and knowledgeable in what is involved in uh, painting these high rise buildings or at least the interiors first. You can start with the interiors. This way later on as the years go by, you become more and more experienced. And then eventually, maybe someday in the future, you could bid on the whole building uh, with your company, depending on how big your company is, how good your management skills are, and how good your subcontracting management skills are. So then you could bid on a building like this yourself, and then you could sub it out to other painting contractors. Of course, it takes time, but you have to start somewhere. So I would advise you to take on some subcontracts uh, from the larger painting uh, companies. Uh, because obviously they are not going to do all this work all by themselves. They often need subcontractors. So like I said, you can take on just the common areas or just the suites um, and then just be, do your pricing based on the quantities that are provided in the Excel spreadsheet. I hope you learned something. My next video is going to be about wall vinyl takeoffs. Uh, if you are a wall vinyl contractor or you are interested, in uh, taking on wall vinyl installation uh, projects. There's very good money to be made in wall vinyl installation projects. I remember we were doing one um, tenant improvement in a hospital and um, I gave a price on the painting and I also gave a separate price on the wall vinyl and I got both projects. I was awarded both projects. Obviously my painters uh, didn't do wall vinyl installation 
so what i did is i purchased all the material and i got a wall vinyl installer uh, to do the installation now he had no clue on how to measure the drawing so you know we did uh, i i took care of all the uh, of all the drawings and measuring everything for him and i told him look this is the square footage that's involved and he gave me you know his price uh, per square foot or per linear foot and i subbed out the wall vinyl project to him so i'm going to talk to you about this wall vinyl project in my next video uh, if you don't want to miss that video just click on the subscribe button and you'll be informed when it comes out i'll see you in my next video Thank you.